to welcome uh, Paul Carvalho, who is going to be talking to us about uh, quality is not allowed in Agile. Uh, Paul's uh, somebody I've known for a number of years. I think we first met at Coach Camp uh, five, six years ago now, and uh, uh, always impressed by Paul's insights. And so uh, we brought him over to uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, quality in the context of the work that we do. Uh, before we get going, I wanted to thank our sponsors, uh, Wrangle, who are our hosts when uh, times are more normal and we have actual in-person events, uh, the Agile Alliance, uh, who help us out with our meetup site, uh, and Squirrel North, who've been uh, real uh, partners in terms of uh, our virtual presentations uh, on a number of occasions as well. So. Uh, Thanks to all those folks for all their contributions and to our volunteers, because uh, without them, uh, none of this would be happening. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Paul to uh, uh, do his quick talk. Uh, take it away, Paul. Just before we start, Tom, I just wanna remind people this, this will be available on uh, our YouTube channel afterwards. And if you're uh, able to subscribe to our channel, that helps, helps us a little bit, please. Um, and uh, of course, we'll be asking uh, people if you've got a few minutes at the end to please provide some feedback uh, to the session. We always wanna try and uh, do better. So if there's um, a chance for you to fill the feedback form out, that would be great, please. And I'll share the, the channel link and the uh, feedback form in the chat. Thanks, John. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, John. Let's, let's get going. All right, quality is not allowed in Agile. Where is Paul gonna take this today? Okay, so before we begin, what I'd like to do is start to gather some quick data. Uh, what we'll do here is, um, and I just put this four stages of competence or of learning for reference. I'm gonna post a Mentimeter quiz in just a moment. And what I want is for you to just don't overthink it, just come up with the first sort of thought that comes to mind. Um, I, I love this reference to the learning, the four stages, which is uh, it starts off with an unconscious incompetence, which is like, I don't know anything about this at, at all. My instincts say nothing. To uh, you start to learn something, you you actively know what you know or don't know. And then we move to a conscious competence, which is uh, kind of, know if I'm thinking about it, I can do a thing until, you know, something like for those of us who, who drive, it's like, you don't have to actively think about steering and all of this, it becomes an unconscious competence. Right? And so now we can have conversations while we're doing this. And a lot of us, when we're practicing and learning, we get to a point where we've built up a lot of skills and knowledge. The questions that we're going to ask today are all things that should be in your unconscious. So these will be your gut responses, your gut reactions. And so as we go into uh, this little mentee survey, I want you to respond as quickly as possible. There's three little fields. So if you wanna put a few multiple answers, go right ahead. Uh, don't second guess yourself. The first one is usually the right one. All right, so that's the code. It'll also be shared in the chat. And what I'm going to do is switch now to um, to that window. As Paul said, the uh, Menti link's in the chat, if you want to click through. There we go. So thinking about software, what is quality? Super. And I have this little timer that's running on my window. So it's just a matter of I'm giving you like 60 seconds to fill in the answers that you have. Great words are coming in.
All right. So thank you. Thank you for your thoughts on that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on unpacking this. It's more like, where do we start to see some of the bigger words uh, starts to bubble up and come up? So fit for purposes in the middle, bug free value, usability. Uh, we see bug free again with a dash or not. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are represented here. That's super. Okay, so let's, let's move on. So thinking about your company, what is quality? The organization that you work for, what is quality now? Again, gut reaction, first thing that comes to mind is usually the right one. Cool. So we're seeing a lot different words that are starting to bubble up. We see important, assurance, value, trust, some of the words that are in the middle. Okay. That's terrific. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Think about your career for a moment. So when you think about your career, what is quality? All right, totally different set of words coming up. We see passion, knowledge, growth, balance. Happiness is in there a few times. Continuous learning, fulfillment, purpose. These are all excellent, thank you. Okay, maybe another 10 seconds. Okay, and moving on to the last one. Think about your life, just life as a whole. What is quality now? Okay, we have happiness, health, spending time with family, partners, happiness, doing what you love, simplicity, learning, wealth, friendship, relaxation, purpose, well-being, comfort, kindness. These are excellent words. Another few more seconds. Okay. Great. Thank you. So there we go. Stop and return to the PowerPoint. So what did we see? 
we saw four different bubbles that appeared. We saw, and this is normally where I might dive in deeper, but for a quick talk, I'm going to have to go through a couple of these slides kind of quickly. Uh, the first one, what is software? And we had some of the traditional ones. A lot of us work in IT and then company. And some there was some overlap there in terms of uh, some of the things in software, you know, thinking about value. And that, that appeared in the organizational, the company one as well. When we shifted pace to the career, we started to see a lot of different things start to appear. And there were some similarities with uh, think about your life as well. So this question of what is quality is one that I've, many of you know, and I've been struggling or working with this question for a long time. Actually, it's coming up on 20 years now. Um, uh, and uh, I've, I've been puzzled with this question of how does the same question keep generating different responses? And Jerry Weinberg was someone that I definitely learned and respected a lot from, but I learned a lot from him. He had this one definition, quality is value to some person and it's time box. So at some time, which, you know, he articulates how you have to understand your audience and that, you know, our needs at the time will reflect what we th what we perceive quality to be. So this definition, I used this for a while, but really what I tried to do was understand, does this fit? And the answer is no, it doesn't always fit. So I was still struggling with it a little bit. Um, enter Agile. What does Agile have to say about quality? Nothing. There, the, the word quality doesn't appear anywhere. So I'm like, okay, well, wait, am I wasting my time on this? And then I thought about it. It's like, no, it doesn't tell you what it is, but it tells you or offers some suggestions on how to do it. So first part is collaborate. You know, we as a team start breaking down those barriers, come together and, and come together with your customers and just let's have that conversation. Let's clarify. What does quality mean? It only took us a, a minute or two for us to start to bubble up all of the things that we saw and start to see some of those patterns. And so then after we've had that conversation, we'll express that understanding in some kind of an artifact, something that has a value. And we're going to do that quickly. So why? So that we can get that feedback. And based on that feedback, we're going to refine our shared understanding of what quality is, and then just sort of repeat that process. Um, as we know, sort of layered around the Agile manifesto is this iterative process. So it doesn't end once you get to respond to change and then take a vacation. It's like, no, we, we go back to the beginning. So I use the Agile Manifesto as a quick guide to say, I know how to do it, but where do I go to get some of those initial questions, or some initial starting points? And so, you know, when I have these conversations with what is with different peoples and organizations, uh, meetups at conferences uh, in industry, you know, when I hear, hey, let's talk about quality. And I've been told this one by a CTO once right after the production system went down and it was felt all across Canada was, well, it, I asked, hey, um, how do we know that everyone is on the same page? And he said, it's obvious. Everyone knows what quality means. I'm like, okay, that's my cue not to follow that up. Uh, we've also heard this. No, I won't talk about quality, but I will tell you how much I hate it later. Or it's like, well, we'll get quality feedback later after we build something. <laughs> Batman slapping. It was like, no, but a two minute chat beforehand is even faster. And so this notion of, well, wait, what is that two minute conversation that we can have beforehand? Where does that come from? And you know, when we look at this definition of quality, and this was inherent in, in Jerry's definition of it's a value to some person, well, quality means different things to different people at different times. So that means even what we say is quality today, it might change six months from now, it might change a year or two years from now, we don't know. And so just knowing this attribute of this word quality, that it means different things to different people at different times, well, then it's a coaching problem, right? It's like, hey, we're coaches. We facilitate these things. When we detect that people are not on the same page, we say, what's an example of that? Or how do we know that they're on the same page? So this for me was a good realization. So quality instantly became a keyword. When I hear people use quality, I'm like, okay, pause. Can you give me an example? What does that mean? Is that enough? And I realized it isn't. So after 
much work and thinking and iteration on it, I realized quality isn't actually a thing. Quality is a meta pattern. So this for me was that this was the connection. This was this was the link that brought it all together. It's a pattern of patterns connected in a specific context. And so when someone you hear someone use the term quality, it's not even enough to say, can you give me an example of that? It's like, I need to understand that they're representing a collection of patterns in some fashion. And how do I unpack that? And so I realized there's actually a series of keys that depending on the context that you're in, that key will be your coaching guide. So for instance, in product quality, you might use Jerry Weinberg's definition as your guide, which is its value to some person. So let's apply that really quickly. So coaching advice, when you hear someone say quality, stop and clean it up. And I put it here like five Y style. And so I'm making reference to clean language here as well, which is, and what kind of X is X. And so we've, we've talked about clean language before in different contexts. I'll leave it to you to uh, follow up and learn more about that. So we have this word quality. What's our guide? What's our key? Well, Jerry said it was value to some person. Okay, let's unpack that. Who are the people who matter? What are some things that are important to them? And so now you start to see this is where the patterns come in. So we can say, okay, as a developer, what's important to you? Oh, well, maintainability, testability, great. Can you give me an example of what maintainability means? Can you give me an example of what, you know, security means or performance? Too often, organizations and teams focus on the functionality and only the functionality, and then they stop. Is that quality? And I think by definition, if it's a meta pattern, it's a pattern of patterns, the answer is no. Just meeting the minimum bar of functionality is not enough. So we need to be aware that we're looking for a pattern of patterns and then drill into a shared understanding that encompasses a much bigger picture. Uh, public service announcement, also be aware of the unclean phrase, non-functional. So that if we go back here, this is a dreaded, awful anti-pattern in, in a lot of the IT industry is you see functionality and non-functionality. I'm like, wow, that's just everything else. That's really non-helpful. So just be careful when you hear the word non-functional because it's also non-useful. Uh, that's one that you'll have to clean up as well and say, what does that mean? So where would we facilitate the clean language everywhere? Uh, you know, when we look at lean, it's step one is define what is a value to the customer. Again, it's not enough to just say, what problem are you solving and focus on the functionality. It's like, what are the dimensions of quality? How do you unpack that? What are the guiding questions that come to mind? Uh, in the middle here, I have uh, story mapping. I love story mapping because this is an opportunity to see as we iterate on this solution, we can see different aspects and as we bring in different specialists and subject matter experts, you start to see these dimensions become clearer. So that's an excellent opportunity. In user stories, we, we talk about the three C's, card, conversation, and confirmation. We put a lot of emphasis on the confirmation, on the acceptance tests or examples, yes. But this is where as coaches, we can be mindful of the questions that are being asked. It's in that conversation is where we're going to really unpack the size of this. How big is this? Uh, BDD is an excellent expression of what some of those specific ones are. But again, that's an end uh, piece. It's what are the conversations? So BDD, I, I like to look at it in sort of three phases, the discovery, the formulation, the gherkin or whatever it happens to be, and then the automation. It's in that discovery phase. And that's the picture that I have down in the bottom corner here, which is we're all hovered around a whiteboard or some shared uh, interface and looking at the same thing. Are we on the same page? What does that look like? And again, if it's about quality, be aware that there's going to be a lot of layers to this. It's not enough to just stop with the first functional piece. Just, just a quick uh, reminder, folks. Uh, sorry, Paul, to interrupt. We got a couple minutes left to go here when we're going to get to some questions. But as Paul's talking, if you have some questions that come in mind, please feel free to throw them in the chat, send them over to me, um, and we'll get to them uh, in a couple of minutes uh, when Paul wraps up. But uh, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, send them over. Sorry for interrupting, Paul. And we're done. Thank you.
<laughs> oh well, then uh, that worked well. I, I thought there was I thought there was more. <laughs> no, I wanted to try and keep this to a quick talk, so uh, that, was, right. that was the last slide. Yes, I probably should have told you. It's like, oh, hey, when you see the koala and the tea, then then I'm done. So thank you. So that that was really cool. I actually thought you had one more, but I'm going to jump in because a couple of questions have already come through the chat. Um, uh, sent to me. So thank you to, uh, to folks for, for sending these over. Um, I'm curious, one of the first things you, you said is that quality doesn't appear in Agile. Um, and somebody's raised the point that it's very, uh, you know, in the Agile manifesto, it's very clear that it says, and I'm, I'm reading, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Isn't that in many ways talking about quality? Yes. So what, thank you, uh, that's a good example. Is it enough? It's not enough. So when I unpack uh, that definition from Jerry Weinberg and it says, you know, what's of value to some people, I sometimes offer a tip saying, think of some people internal to your organization, think of some people external to your organization. So when we're thinking about internal people and you noticed I had written developers on there, hey, do you care about technical excellence? Why is this important? So we know that technical excellence, for instance, is important in order to make the software maintainable, that we can continue to add additional quality requirements like performance, security, more functionality. And if we don't pay attention to that partial definition or, or aspect of quality, then the external or the customer facing features and quality starts to become at risk. So there are internal and external aspects that we need to pay attention to. And so, yes, I can sort of see the fingerprints of the programmers in the Agile Manifesto that say things like this. Um, but it's definitely, that's one thing to consider, but there's more. I, I like that. Um, again, if anyone has questions, throw them in the chat, or if you want, just, you know, sort of let me know that you, you'd like to ask a question and we'll, uh, we'll make sure, um, we'll make sure to get to you. Um, some, a couple of people actually, Paul, have asked for sources on clean language. It looked like you had a picture of a book up there. Is there something that you recommend uh, to learn more about clean language? Gosh, I've learned from many people who are on this call. Um, there is that one book, I, and right now my mind is not thinking about that. Um, what was the name of that book? Hold on, sorry. So yes, Clean Language, Revealing Metaphors and Opening Minds by Wendy Sullivan and Judy Rees. Um, if you start to look up clean language and agile on the internet, there's some wonderful references. Um, right now in this very moment, I'm just drawing a blank. That's okay. Um, I'm curious, Paul, maybe, is there an opportunity somewhere where we could post some links afterwards or the yes. places people could go to? If yes. you want to post in the conversation of the meetup, that's a great spot for people to find stuff. Perfect. Yeah, we, 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 can get, uh, we can get to that. Uh, Lucy has a great question here um, in the chat there, Paul, uh, talking about every week she summarizes a quality report. She's wondering what she should call it, if not the quality report. She also says hi, by the way. Hi. Uh, thank you. So quality report. Uh, I would just sort of pause and start to look at the breadth of what's covered there. So one of the challenges I've had over the years in raising this question of quality is, are we on the same page? What does that mean? So, you know, I might start with that question as well, which is what's in your report? Who's the audience? What's their definition of, of quality? And is it shared for the software, for the organization, for your customers? Remember that first activity where as soon as we started to shift the context just a little, it started to change the things that started to bubble up. And that's the activity that as coaches, we need to be aware of is that someone like if you're, if you ask QA, they'll say, oh, it's a uh, absence of bugs or this. I'm like, nah, uh, let's, let's talk to our customers. Let's talk to our users. Let's talk to financial risk. Let's talk to security risk. It's like, well, what is quality to the organization, to our end users? When we're talking about a quality report, sure, they can have dashboards, you can have reports, whatever. My first foundational question is, are we on the same page? Are we in agreement with what should be what we should be examining and demonstrating the progress on? 
Cool. Hopefully that uh, Lucy was was a good uh, a good place to go. Um, curious. You, you mentioned that that uh, you know when people say quality, Paul, that's a bit of a trigger word for you. Where you, it's like that that flag goes off in the back of your mind saying, "I know I need to dig deeper on this." Are there other words or other phrases that are common that you know as soon as you hear them? I don't. You know, it's it's. Are we on the same page with what you mean by that word? Are there other words, or is is quality sort of the big one that jumps out to you? No, the first, that's a good question. Thanks. The first word that came to me when I first started coaching a while ago was the word user. You know, we talk about user stories and uh, we see people who are starting out say, as a user, I want this feature. And I'm like, okay, well, who's your user? <laughs> can we unpack that word? Uh, can we get a little more specific? And I remember there was this one um, company that I worked at that said, well, as a student, I'm like, well, what kind of a student? Are we talking about a kindergarten student? Are we talking about a high school student, a college student, a corporate student? It's like, you know, so we can take any word that is used really loosely and ask the question, is this specific enough for me to have a clear idea of who the demographics are? Uh, from the UX and CX world, what we often have is this notion of personas. And a persona represents um, a specific target group or demographic. And usually it's clear enough that we know who we're talking about. User was one of the first ones, but it doesn't stop there. There's also, uh, actually, I found the word testing is kind of a, a, a trigger word as well, is that I saw a team that was stuck once uh, during a refinement session and they couldn't they couldn't get unstuck. And I realized everyone was using the word test, 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 test. And I said, okay, hold on for the next five minutes. You're not allowed to use the word test, pick a different word. And as soon as they were forced to use an alternate word, they got into alignment within two minutes. And so what we'll find as coaches is that there's sometimes words that get in the way because they're being interpreted in different ways. It just so happened for me that quality also happened to be one of those words that is constantly thrown out. And when you talk to someone in sales versus a project manager versus a developer versus a tester, it's like they all have these different interpretations and that's fine. How do we get on the same page? So I might suggest as a coach to just be aware of those opportunities where yes, the teams get stuck because there's misinterpretations and build up your own vocabulary. I just gave you an example of like two or three. When you say as a coach, what kind of coach? No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, listen, I just want to be conscious of the time. There are a couple of questions that I'd love to get to, but I also want to realize that we do try to end these calls shortly after 6.30, which we are at right now. If you need to drop off, there's a link that's in the chat window. Uh, John is posting it right now to provide your feedback. Love to get some feedback on what you thought of Paul's talk and of this format uh, so that the organizers can uh, continue to improve. But for those of you that are able to stay, Paul, I'd like to keep going with a couple of questions um, that are in there. Uh, and the next one tied in really nicely, which is, you know, your talk of user. Well, what kind of user? And Frank asks a really good question. You know, where does quality is in the eye of the beholder fit in? And, and how does that relate to the user of, of the system? And I think you touched on it a little bit more, but hoping you can, hoping you can dig a little bit deeper on that one. Love it. I'm getting goosebumps from that question. Yes, thank you. Uh, one of the uh, patterns or models that I used for a while was this notion of equating quality and beauty in being in the eye of the beholder. And definitely Jerry Weinberg's definition falls into that same category. Well, it's a value to some person. So the question is, well, who's that person? Uh, so when we create a user story as an example, say, hey, we are going to build this thing of value for this person so they can accomplish some benefit or some reason. Is that a requirement? No, that's not a requirement. But what we're saying is that user is the first person that we're defining. That's our target audience for this thing that we're delivering. So the question is, how can we get it in front of them as quickly as possible? Let's not overthink it. And so what I would like to encourage the, the teams to do is build something, put it in front of that person so that you can get that fast feedback. So this notion of whether you're doing scrum or continuous flow in a Kanban style, when we make that initial hypothesis that this thing that we're about to build is of value to some person, 
that's the person who is going to judge us on the beauty. And if we can't have that conversation and do some rapid prototyping right away, then build something small and fast that provides value, put it in front of them. They will then reflect back what they see, how they feel, what are the different dimensions, you know, and UX gives us a nice little empathy map, you know, let's, let's collect data, you know, uh, what do we observe? How do we feel? You know, what do we think? And these are all excellent guiding questions on aspects of beauty or aspects of quality, if you will. But ultimately, it's like, I can make a guess, but I don't know, I'm building this for you, I want to show it to you as quickly as possible so that you can tell me am I on the same page or not. So again, the fast feedback and the rapid iteration is really the key. Uh, in this notion, this sort of similarity between quality and, and beauty, which is we make a guess and we'll just iterate on that based on the feedback we receive. That's a very different approach than I think many organizations are in a position to, uh, to take at this point, but I, I, love the, uh, I love the sentiment behind it. Two last questions. Um, hopefully we, we can keep everyone. If, if, again, if you need to drop off, there's a link for feedback. Um, and Tom has also just posted a link to some information on clean language that you can find on uh, Wikipedia. Thanks for that, Tom. Uh, but two last questions, Paul, if, if we can get to them. Um, one is I'd love to, to find out about, um, and, 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 um, and uh, you know, Scott's asked the question here about how do we map um, quality definitions in our OKRs, our objective and key results? or if your organization uses KPIs, key performance indicators. How does quality map into, into that sort of uh, a paradigm? Need a whiteboard. <laughs> um, right, so this is where we get into, um, so the first two questions that I asked in the survey, which is what is quality in the software? What is quality in your organization? And so we can map out what are the elements of the culture that we want to promote and support within our organization. And when you look at something like KPIs or, or OKRs, I don't think it's enough to only focus on the customer satisfaction, is that we should be focusing on employee happiness and wellness as well. And there's an interesting thing that happens when you shift from focusing externally on customers or stakeholders to focusing on your employees and teams, is that when you focus on building a happy, healthy culture, then your customers are happy and your stakeholders are happy. And so I might suggest that the definitions of quality for some of these organizations when they're building out KPIs and, and OKRs shouldn't be only externally focused on those numbers of like, uh, you know, market adoption and, you know, external customer satisfaction. Yes, those are nice. I believe that the elements of organizational health and quality should also be factored in there as well. And so I might broaden the scope of what are being sort of suggested as things that we should be dedicating effort towards includes how we are helping each other, how we're learning and growing and supporting each other. And I believe those would be valuable additions to a definition of quality within an organization. It sounds like a really humane place that I'd like to, uh, I'd like to uh, be involved <laughs> in, Paul. I, I, I love, I love it. Thank you. Uh, last question, um, and, uh, and then we'll wrap it up after this. And again, if anyone has some feedback, we'd love to get the feedback in the survey that uh, John posted in the, in the chat window, if you can take just a minute or two to, uh, to click on that. But, um, but before we, we wrap it up, Paul, I'm just wondering if people wanted to get in touch with you to talk more about quality or trigger words or, or digging into this. How can people best get in touch with you? Sure. Um, the, uh, the last slide that I had here, I can uh, share the screen again. So this last page uh, on Twitter, you can find me at, at can underscore agile or from my website, qualitydriven.com. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on a few other media ones, but these are the, like, Twitter is the one that I mainly reach out to. Paul, that was fantastic. Uh, really, really great, uh, great, great chat. Really appreciated your time tonight. On, uh, on behalf of all of the organizers of the Agile TO uh, group, thanks so much for your time. And to everyone who attended tonight, thank you so much for your 
uh, your participation and joining us. Uh, hopefully you got some value out of this. Hopefully you'll complete the feedback form to tell uh, the group how we can continue to improve on this format. Uh, Tom, uh, why don't I throw it back over to you and uh, you can you can tell us that uh, that that's it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Uh, always great to have you uh, do our Q and A. It's uh, it's really uh, it's uh, it's a tricky thing to do well, and uh, and you certainly pull it off. Paul, really really enjoyed that tonight. I uh, really enjoyed the uh, interactive piece at the beginning. I thought that was a great lead in, and uh, and really set the tone for the rest of the presentation. And uh, so, yeah, thanks so much for coming out and helping us out with this. And uh, thanks to everybody that came out tonight. Uh, I, uh, I think it was a great uh, quick talk and uh, hope to see you guys soon. And uh, once again, fill out the feedback form, just two questions. And uh, we'll see you two Wednesdays from now.